Alrighty, first video of 2021. Last year was pretty crazy, right? <laughs> What's up guys, if you're new to this channel, my name's Katon. I'm a loan officer from San Diego, California. And on this channel, I help people just like you learn how to buy their first home and navigate the home buying process. So quick recap for anyone who wasn't really paying attention to 2020 at all, as far as rates were concerned at least. Mortgage rates hit an all time low after the COVID pandemic hit the United States. We saw bonds drop significantly, the stock market obviously dipped, and there was a lot of financial uncertainty of what would happen. Now, eventually the stock market rebounded, but what we ended up seeing is mortgage rates weren't acting accordingly. Usually when the stock market rises, so do interest rates. But this time, rates actually stayed pretty low. And this fueled a huge demand of home buyers and home sellers and a huge wave of people refinancing their homes as well. Now, fast forward to the first two weeks of January 2021. Now, obviously, we went through a pretty crazy election cycle that's still technically, as of this video, not done yet because the inauguration still next week. We've also seen multiple waves of the coronavirus pandemic, uh, and it really doesn't look like there's an end in sight, even though the vaccine has begun to roll out. And now with the Democrats not just holding the presidency, but the House and the Senate as well, it looks like we're going to get a much bigger stimulus package than was promised at the end of 2020. So ultimately, this means that you're probably going to see some big gains in the stock market. But because of all this money that's being printed by the Fed, we're going to see a lot of inflation as well. And as we can typically inspect in a high inflation market, we're going to see interest rates rise as well. And mortgages, unfortunately, in this case, are no exception. In just the last two weeks of 2021, in January, we've seen interest rates tick up from, you know, VA rates being around 2.25 to now being around 2.375 to 2.5 for most buyers. So we're not looking at an earth shattering change in rates here, but you are starting to see the first few signs of us starting to recover from this pandemic, at least in the market's eyes. So what does this mean for homeowners? Well, realistically, most homeowners in the United States, at this point at least, have probably already refinanced. And anyone who was sitting on the fence waiting for rates to get even lower, drop into the ones for the first time, I'm sorry to say that it's probably unrealistic at this point to see a 30 year mortgage with a rate starting with one. So if you have been fence sitting, I highly recommend that you go stop watching this video, click the link in my bio and let's talk about refinancing because you're missing out on a huge opportunity. Now, although rates are getting worse than where they were in 2020, keep in mind, this is still way better than where we were at this time last year. This time last year, rates were still in the low to mid threes, honestly, which was fantastic then, but right now now wouldn't be so hot. Now, ultimately, I predict that the inflation is going to continue as, you know, Congress continues to pump more money into stimulus bills to help us get out of this, to help businesses get jump started again, and to help, you know, regular consumers spending money again. So I'm predicting by the end of 2021, you're going to see interest rates, at least from where they were at the beginning of the year to the end of the year, getting up at least a half a percent. So where government rates were around 2.25, you're going to see them around 2.75 being the new norm. And for conventional, unfortunately, they're probably Probably going to tick back up over that three percent marker getting into three to three and a quarter being roughly the average now take all this once again with a grain of salt this is just one man's prediction of the market i don't have a crystal ball if i did i would have spent a lot more money on bitcoin back in 2012 but i didn't but what i will tell you is that history typically doesn't lie whenever there's widespread inflation interest rates go up and that's more than likely what you're going to see with the banks and what they're going to be doing over the next 12 months. Now, the Fed has already come out and said that they're going to keep the Fed rate, which we already know if you've watched this channel, it's not the same as mortgage rates at or near zero, at least for the next three years. So that's one good sign that we'll probably be in a low interest rate market at least for the next two or three years. However, they're not going to be as low as they were in 2020. So how does this affect the real estate market? Well, in talking to a bunch of my real estate friends here in San Diego, everyone's predicting that there's going to be even more homes sold in 2021 than there were in 2020. And this is a function of more people going back to work as the stimulus bill continues to go. Vaccines are going to start rolling out. So as more people get back into the workplace, their overall household income is going to go up. And people who weren't able to get into a home or weren't able to buy a home last year because of unemployment, because they didn't have a job, they'll be able to get back into this pool of buyers alongside everyone who was already there. So I'm actually expecting home values to go up here in San Diego, anywhere from five to 8% for a single family home. 
which is huge. You're also starting to see the increase of that work from home mentality. Uh, companies are adopting it as a standard now, which is great. But now what you're gonna see is, you know, those Silicon Valley people who couldn't afford houses in San Francisco moving down to places like here in San Diego or elsewhere in the country because they don't have to be, you know, a commutable distance from their office. They can work from wherever and they're probably gonna move where it's a little bit more affordable to live. Now, if you're renting right now, this is gonna present a little bit of a challenge for you because you're going to this market for the first time. Now you're competing with a much bigger pool of buyers in order to get to a home. So it's gonna be really important to team up with the right real estate agent and the right mortgage lender to make sure that your offer is extremely competitive. But ultimately guys, this is really just one man's prediction of what I think might happen with interest rates over the next 12 months. I have no idea right? This is just me looking at what's happened historically, comparing to what's happening now, and making a prediction. Ultimately, anything can happen. I mean, I'm pretty sure we all realized that with 2020. Uh, and hopefully 2021 is nothing like that. But just keep in mind, things can change, the market can change at any point. But I want to arm you guys with the knowledge that you can have to be prepared for those market swings. So let me know in the comments below what you think is going to happen with interest rates in 2021. Do you think they're going to go up? down stay the same or you know somewhere in between love to hear your thoughts now if this video brought you some value if you learned something new today it would mean the world if you just hit that like button helps me out with the algorithm and if you want to see more content like this go ahead and hit that subscribe button as well but until next time guys see ya